Hello everyone, I hope you all are happy and healthy. Yesterday, a brand new trailer for the Villains of Valley View came out and it has me thinking about what will happen in Season 2, so I'll be sharing all of my predictions for Season 2 in this video as well as what I hope will happen in Season 2. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So my first prediction is about Amy's future and what her ultimate decision will be as to whether she will take the leader of all villains position or not. At first, I was thinking that she would accept the position and be the leader for a tiny while before realizing that maybe being the leader of all villains isn't what she wants after all. Like, maybe she just doesn't want to go back to being a villain. Like, after everything that Hartley taught her about being a better person, maybe she realizes that she doesn't want to go back to, like, being a full-time villain. However, after watching the trailer and seeing how Jake told Amy that she just can't live a double life, now, I believe that Amy will try to be both Havoc, the leader of all villains, and normal girl Amy Madden at the same time. Maybe she does this because she is still torn on exactly who she is, like should she continue to be a villain that tries to bring misery to people, or should she continue to go down the path of becoming a better person? Maybe she wants to spend some time in Valley View to please her family, since in the trailer, Eva says something about wanting to go back to Valley View. Even in the season 1 finale, Eva, Eva admits that she misses Texas. Or maybe Amy will try to be normal, at least like only half the time, to make Hartley happy because obviously Hartley is probably not going to be on board with Amy going back to her villain life and maybe Amy will try to convince Hartley that it's okay because she'll only be a villain half the time or something. <laughs> I don't really know, but I think that Amy will keep going back and forth to Centropolis and, in the, and then to Valley View and like try to do like, like just try to go back and forth and you know, and I believe that doing that will end up causing some very big problems for the Madden somehow. And speaking of problems from the trailer, as well as the official description for season two, we see that another villain will once again be out to destroy the Maddens. I find this whole concept of the villains turning on each other to be very interesting. First Onyx, and now the villain we see in the trailer is after them. I wonder why the other villains seem to always be the main antagonist in this show. I would think that the heroes would be more of a threat than the other villains. I mean, I know that some villains are obviously not the most loyal people in the world, but you'd think that, you would think that all the villains would want to stick together just because they're all villains, but I guess that's not the case in this show. <laughs> I think it goes back to something I thought about back in November, and I actually wrote down all of these thoughts in a Twitter thread, and basically what I said was that one thing that I find really interesting about the Villains of Valley View is that Amy and her family are not only viewed as villains by superheroes, but they are also the enemies of other villains like Onyx as well. And I think that Amy and her family are not actually evil people, but they convinced themselves they had to be the bad guys since they don't fit the description of what a good person should be. But like I said before, Amy and her family aren't truly evil, which is why the evil villains are out to destroy them. And I think that's why Onyx was so mad that Amy stood up for her mom because like Hartley said, standing up for your family is a good thing. It's like Amy and her family are too bad to be superheroes but also not bad enough to be accepted by the other villains. Maybe that could be something that Amy and her family struggle with throughout the show. It's a very difficult thing to feel like you don't fit in anywhere but perhaps as the show goes on and as Amy starts to develop good qualities while also staying true to who she is, she might realize that she is neither a villain or a hero. No matter how much Amy will develop as a character, I don't think she will ever want to be a superhero. But we see that she also doesn't tro t but we see that she also doesn't tro tolerate true evil, especially when someone is threatening her family or Hartley. That's why I believe that Amy and her family will never go back to working for the League of Villains, even if Onyx didn't want to destroy them and decided to give them a second chance. I think that Amy will realize throughout the show that she doesn't fit either the hero or the villain label, that she's not all good or all bad, and that's okay because no one is. She doesn't have to try to be anything except who she wants to be. So basically, I was just reading the Twitter, th the Twitter thread that I had written back in November. So this was obviously before I watched the season finale and everything of season one. But um, so yeah, I think that Basically, what I was trying to say is that, yeah, I think that the Maddens aren't really as evil as they think they are. And so now they have themselves in a tough situation where they joined the villain world because they thought that all they could ever be was villains. But the other villains notice that they aren't as evil as they are. So that's why they are out to destroy them. 
because the villains who are the antagonists of the story, like Onyx and then the new villain, the new villain throughout that we'll see throughout season two are the ones that are truly evil and not the Maddens. Like we even see in the flashback Christmas episode that back when they were villains, Amy changed her mind about stealing the big Christmas tree so that a girl could get to take pictures of the tree for her father who couldn't spend Christmas with her since he was in the military. So I think that the Maddens have always had a little bit of good in them. I just think they got themselves into the villain world and so that's all they thought they could ever be. But I think that eventually Amy will, re Amy will realize that she doesn't have to be a villain anymore, that being a villain doesn't have to define her, um, but also not being, a vi not being a villain doesn't mean she has to become some goody two-shoes either, and it doesn't mean she has to stop being independent and strong and opinionated, or that she has to stop being herself. Again, this is just what I think will happen, but I could be way off. <laughs> I think I'll leave my prediction about what Amy will decide at that and then just wait and see what direction the writers will take this whole development with Amy with Amy and her character like basically with where they will take this whole development with her character in because yeah it's, it's a super interesting thing and one of the producers said that they wanted to humanize these villains in a way that villains haven't been humanized before and that's one of the reasons why I think this whole concept of this show having the villains as the protagonist of the series is so interesting Perhaps we will have something that'll make us really empathize with the Maddens this season. One of the things that I predict is that we will, that we will be seeing a lot more of the family and Centropolis this season, and I think that will give us the opportunity to see what it's truly like to be a villain. Because maybe in this story, being a villain isn't all fun and games where you can just do whatever you want. Maybe there's a hidden dark side where once you become a villain, you become forced to comply with all of the villain rules and if you're not the type of villain that the other villains want you to be then your life could be in danger it's almost like being a villain can make you a total outcast because not only are you considered a bad guy by the civilians and the heroes but even your fellow villains will turn on you if you make one mistake and that's a really difficult situation to be in my next prediction for this season is that it'll be more action-packed than last season now, this is probably an unpopular opinion I'm about to say, but I kind of hope that I'm a little bit wrong about this prediction because I really like how season one was structured where the show wasn't just all action. There was someone who had said that they had hoped that this show wouldn't just be a goofy villain comedy, that it would get darker and have more drama. And I slightly disagree with that because in one way, I would absolutely love to learn more about the emotional struggles of being a villain in the story. You know, basically what I was talking about earlier. However, I do prefer goofier and more lighthearted shows, and I'm not a big fan of action, believe it or not. Like, I'm not a big action fan. I wasn't drawn to this show for the action, but more so for the characters and the funny moments. And I do want to go back to seeing the goofy adventures of a bunch of villains trying to live a normal life in Valley View. But with that being said, if this season and the rest of the show is more action-packed like I predict it will be, then it's not that big of a deal since I'm already attached to these characters and this story and so I'm still watching this show, don't worry. <laughs> I'm just saying that I would personally prefer for at least some of the episodes to be a little less action heavy, that's all. Okay, my next prediction is that Celia will find out who the Maddens really are this season. Um, because in the official description for season two, it says that family secrets will be ex will be exposed, and I think that refers to Celia eventually finding out that the Maddens are villains. And I hope I'm right about this because I'm very curious to know what her reaction will be. Also, I kind of think that Celia might have been a villain in the past. Like, does anyone else get a villain vibe from Celia? Because you know she has all these like little secrets, and also she's and also just how she loves insulting people. And the fact that even the Maddens are a bit scared of her makes me believe that Celia might just have some sort of villainous past too. Now, I'm not 100% sure of that. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I wouldn't be surprised if that turned out to be true. <laughs> and speaking of family secrets being exposed, I think we will also learn more about how Vic and Eva became a couple in this season. Well, at least I hope so because like we definitely need to see more of their story. It would be so cool to like, you know, see them celebrating their anniversary in an episode or something because I think that we need more romantic moments between Vic and Eva because because sometimes like it just, it just almost seems like in this show they seem to like bicker and fight with each other more than anything which I guess in some ways that kind of makes sense you know I mean married couples do fight a lot <laughs> um but yeah but it would be just a little bit it would just be nice if we could just see 
a little bit more of like Vic and Eva just having, you know, being a little bit like, you know, just romantic with each other, you know, just a little bit more. That would be great. Um, okay. And the next prediction I have is that I believe that Jake and Starling will end up together this season. I know that Starling broke up with him because Amy wasn't okay with the two dating. And I know that things between the two of them will probably become even more difficult due to Amy becoming the leader of all villains again. But I do think that eventually the two will end up together at some point this season. Um, I'm not super invested into like whether or not they'll get back together or not. I mean, in the beginning, at first, I was like really interested. Um, like when it came to like Jake and Starling, I was really interested in their relationship. And I think I really did like shift them. I did really ship them in the beginning. But I think now, I don't know, I feel like that I kind of before I can get like really invested in their story again, I really just need to see more moments with Jake and Starling. I also need Amy to finally be 100% okay with Jake and Starling. And then probably once that happens, I probably will be really, um, really interested in their relationship and really hoping that they get back together again. I mean, I kind of do think that Jake and Starling, I do think that maybe they are meant to be, maybe, um, because obviously we see how Jake definitely has changed and he changed because of her and you know and um you know and we can see how much Jake really cares about Starling too like he was willing to turn himself in so that Starling could still be accepted by the other superheroes so I think actually thinking about that actually makes me want the two to be together more just thinking about how Jake really does care about her like that but um but yeah, but I do think they probably will end up together this season. I could be wrong, but I do think that eventually they'll end up together. You know, once everything, once we get all this other stuff that's going on, once we solve all these other problems, I think that Jake and Starling might finally be able to start their relationship together. So yeah. Okay, my next prediction is that Colby will keep getting new powers, obviously. <laughs> In the teaser trailer, we see that Colby has the ability to give other people his powers too, and I think that Colby will just keep getting more and more powers as the season goes along. Now, there could be a storyline where he all of a sudden loses his powers, and I think that could make for a really interesting development. We see that Colby felt so lost when he didn't have any powers yet at the beginning of season one. I think that Kobe tends to put a lot of his self-esteem and self-worth in the fact that he has so many powers, and so maybe it would be a good a good thing for Kobe to lose his powers temporarily, so that he's able to realize that the reason why he's the chosen one is not because of his powers, but because of who he is as a person, because of who he is as a person, and I think that would be a really great lesson for Kobe to learn. I also predict that maybe Amy will get some new powers as well, since it looks like she does have a different power in the trailer. And my last prediction is that maybe, just maybe, Hartley and Amy will finally be a canon couple. Because in the official description of season two, it says that unexpected feelings arise. And if that's not referring to Amy and Hartley realizing they love each other, then I will be a little disappointed to say the least. But seriously, Amy and Hartley are one of my favorite non-canon Disney Channel ships. And so I really, really hope that Hartley will finally become a reality this season. And speaking of Amy and Hartley, I do think that the whole situation with Havoc being the leader of all villains will definitely cause some problems for Amy's and Amy and Hartley's friendship, but I believe that they'll be able to work things out and become best friends again, and then they'll eventually become girlfriends. <laughs> so yeah, that's all of my predictions and hopes for season two of the Villains of Valley View. What are your predictions for season two and what do you want to see happen this season? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and definitely don't forget to watch the Villains of Valley View on June 15th on Disney Channel and then June 16th on Disney+. Plus. So yeah, so thank you for watching. Please remember to love yourself and be kind to everyone. Bye!